All right, the euro is rallying right now as investors dismiss a cooling of inflation both in Spain and Germany. In Spain, it's being dismissed because largely due to a drop in energy prices. And while we have seen inflation cool in Germany, it did come in higher than expected. Let's bring in James Roster, head of global macro strategy at TD Securities. James, look at us talking about inflation like the good old days uh, instead of a, a crisis within Europe and what's happening with Deutsche Bank. Is this, are we kind of back to what we used to be obsessed with a, a few weeks ago, focusing on the various components of inflation? I mean, look, I'd love to say that, of course, as, a, as an economist. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see, I guess. I, I think like like everyone, um, there's, a, there's a certain sense of nervousness out there that, that something else is going to happen. And we're not quite in the clear yet. But yeah, no, certainly, I mean, data like inflation data, we've got central banks really trying to separate financial stability and inflation targeting. It, it still matters a lot. And you can see that the moves in markets today reflect that. Um, you know, we had the German and Spanish numbers, as you said, come in, uh, you know, we're seeing accelerations, but the German numbers came in hotter than expected. And what really stands out, I think, in Europe is the core inflation numbers. When you look across the US, Canada, the UK, and the Eurozone, the Eurozone is the only of the, one of those four that's seeing core inflation continuing to rise. All the others have seen it top out and come down a bit. And on a three-month basis, which is the way we tend to look at it, because it strips out some of those base effects from a year ago, it's been between uh, is it five, five, six percent around that range since September last year. There's no signs of cooling at all yeah. you know global goods prices are supposed to be pulling it down right now global goods inflation is still on an upward path in the eurozone um, this is a huge battle for the ecb going forward and and i think that's why you saw that euro rally because it it basically confirms that the ecb needs to do more right with respect to raising rates how do you see that playing out yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, look, the, the environment's definitely more fragile now. Um, you know, there's no denying that. I, I think the ECB is confident in its banking supervision tools. And like many central banks, we're going to see it saying, look, we can supervise the banks, we can target inflation. But at the end of the day, there's still an interaction between those two things. Financial conditions are going to naturally just be tighter in globally, effectively, because of what's been going on both in the US and in Switzerland, uh, and to some degree in the rest of the uh, Europe as well. So yeah, there's there's going to be a little bit of tightening in financial conditions from that. It's going to do some of the work of the ECB. So when you know, from our point of view, we had expected the ECB to do uh, the 50 basis point hike they did a couple weeks ago. We were looking for another 50 in May and then a final 25 in June. At this point, it's hard to see them going 50 in May still, even if that inflation data is coming in above consensus and and sort of on the, on the hot side. I, I think they're just going to have to go in 25 steps from here. So for us, we think a couple more 25s here that gets them to three and a half percent by June. The probably going to tap out then. But if they need to go again in July, sure, maybe they'll consider that option. Uh, one line I, I read this morning from a strategist that I thought really uh, distilled the current quandary that central bankers are in right now is that policy is not tight enough to deal with inflation, but perhaps too tight to avoid accidents. And I think that's what you're talking about when you talk about, you know, stability. Yeah. Are we still seeing, you know, the, the signs of those strains um, you know, when it comes to spreads, when it comes to, to CDS pricing, uh, are you still seeing that as, as kind of a legacy effect of what's gone on over the past couple of weeks? I mean, the thing, the things are obviously calmer, but there's that tension. Right. And I, I think, you know, what you saw with Deutsche Bank last week, um, you know, reportedly just down to a single single firm trading the CDS there, um, you know, people get twitchy and, and bigger moves can happen off the back of, of perhaps, you know, fair, fairly small um, idiosyncratic moves. Um, so, yeah, there's a certain nervousness out there. And I, th I think it is it's going to remain for quite some time. But when we look at sort of the health of the European banking sector, in particular in the EU, so kind of outside of Switzerland here, I mean, you compare them with the U.S. banking sector. I mean, small, medium-sized banks here are about 20% of the sector. It's about 35% in the U.S. Uh, when you look at their balance sheets, you know, they've got about 10% of their assets in bonds versus about 18% in the U.S. Um, and the rules that apply to banks in the EU are far, far stricter. They, if you recall in the last you know, under the previous president in the US, a lot of those rules were lifted for small and medium sized banks. Mm -hmm. That's not happened in Europe. So they're still facing really strict stress testing conditions and liquidity ratios, all those sorts of things um, are very, very 
you know, there, there, there's a high bar there. Doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. I mean, you know, sentiment can drive things in pretty wild and wacky ways. And, and I think that's what we've got to be careful about. But, you know, as a, looking at the fundamentals, I think we can all step back and say that things look fairly sound. And so where do you go? What's, what's your best idea right now about, you know, kind of where to hide out, where, where you can find relative calm? Well, I think, I mean, central banks are obviously going to be hiking at a much slower pace now. Um, and I, I think that's, you know, that's going to be the theme across the G10, really, um, for those that are still hiking. It's going to be delicate steps, meeting by meeting. In some ways, I mean, that introduces a bit of volatility in terms of, you know, meeting to meeting expectations for rates. But I think it does kind of prevent a bit of that, you know, those, those big steps, they, they were big, right? Going yeah. 50, 75 basis points at once. Now we're talking 25s. I think, I think inflation, we're going to start to see come down rapidly. And, you know, indeed, we, we saw that today, right? I mean, just because it was an upside surprise on the German numbers, it fell from 9.3 to 7.8. Um, Spain headline fell from 6 to Three, three. Now, I, you know, you have to caution. A lot of that is coming. The decline is coming from base effects because we had those massive hikes in energy prices with Russia's invasion of Ukraine a year ago. So we're starting to lose some of that. And the, you know, again, those core numbers are still pretty firm. But I, I think going forward, we're there'll, there'll be a bit of. I, I, I think uh, people, people will take these lower inflation numbers in stride and probably be quite happy to see them. And it'll allow central banks to be a little more predictable and a little slower with where they're going. So what does that mean for the those in the rate cut camp? that are still pr pricing in cuts, particularly in the U.S.? Yeah, we, we don't see it. Um, well, we, we don't see it in Europe this year. We, d we do think that by the end of this year in the U.S., we're going to start to see the unemployment raising quite a bit, uh, employment rate rising quite a bit. Um, we're going to see negative growth in Q4, we think, in the U.S. as well. So we do have the Fed cutting at its very last meeting of the year, just 25 basis points, but they start – going in 50 basis point chunks uh, into 2024. So hmm. yeah, we do, we've got those cuts coming on the US side. I think in Europe, it's gonna be a little bit longer. The ECB, you know, they're, they've still got a little way to go, right? They're not anywhere near terminal and they're they're much closer to their neutral rate than, than say the Fed is. So they're probably gonna get to three and a half percent and have to hold it there for the better part of the year. Bank of England probably gonna hold it four and a half in, until early next year, I would think at the, at the earliest. So we'll probably see a bit of calm once they hit those terminal rates here in Europe. Europe.